it's been a dramatic weekend in the Premier League, maybe a decisive one. We'll know later in the season, but there were some big games and some big results. And I'm joined now by John Giles to talk about the matches. Uh, John, we might as well start with Arsenal. Away to Spurs, they have a terrible record. They haven't won there since, I think, 2013, 2014. And Spurs have bullied them a lot over the years. A young team and 2-0 win. What did you make of them? Not just in terms of that game, but it, it takes them eight points clear at the top of the Premier League of Manchester City. What do you make of them, John? Well, I thought they were impressive, Eamon. You know, I thought they, they approached the game well. Uh, just because it was Spurs in a way game, you see teams over the years, even now, they they set up shop early on and they go for a, go for a draw. But Arsenal didn't do that. No. They, they played as if they were playing at home, uh, played well, uh, deserved to win it. I thought Spurs made a bit of a comeback in the second half. Uh, but overall, a really, really good performance and a very, very good win for Arsenal in a very, very important match. Yeah, you could see in the first half, they, as you say, they played as if they were at home and they totally dominated Spurs. Spurs came back in at them a bit in the second half, but they didn't, yeah. they didn't yield. The important players for them, this young fella, Saka, who's playing wide on the right, he looks exceptional, John. He's in the England team as well. But you, you know, with young players, sometimes they can start with a bang and then it fizzles out a bit. But there's no sign of him fizzling out, John. In fact, I think he's getting better. Yeah. Well, if, if, the, if they're the real McCoy aim and that's what happens. You know, yeah. you see kids coming in sometimes to score two goals and papers. He's all over the papers and all that. And then two years later, he's, he's, he's not there. Yeah. But it's not that that's not the case with Arsenal. You know, they, 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 they have good young players. Yes. Uh, both of the wingers, Martinelli, isn't Martinelli, Martinelli on the Martinelli on the left, yeah. You know, they, 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 like you don't see a team like that now of the last few years who have wide players. I mean, really good wide players. Yeah. Uh, they're few and far between. But, but Arsenal have a few of them. They have, they got this kid, Nakatea as well, who's standing in for, um, Jesus, who's injured and going to be out for a little while. And he had, yeah. Made a very good start at Arsenal. Um, yeah, he's, he's very good. I, mean, I saw him interview the other day. Did you see him? No. He's a kid that you, you'd love to see do well. Yes. <laughs> you know, there was a real innocence about him. He's a national supporter, only a kid. Yeah, Liam but, signed but, him when he was 10. <laughs> yeah, you know, like he's, he's, but he was a real kid, Eamon, that was delighted to be, to yes. be doing what he's doing. Yes. You know, yeah. enthusiastic. Not not big headed anyway. Just delighted to be national supporter, actually playing, doing his stuff, and uh, you know he's a real good, real good approach to kid. And you no, know, definitely the young players they have are actually doing it now. Yeah. You know, sometimes you have to wait a while. I mean, they've been in the team, they've had a few a bit of experience, but uh, but they're getting getting better and better. And the manager obviously is encouraging them. I mean, whether yeah. they're sports or anywhere else. This is what we do. We go out and we play. There's no, there's no complicated uh, uh, instructions for the players. It's go out and play. Do your best. When we haven't got it, we get it back. Uh, and capable of scoring goals, as we can see. So it's, it looks good for Arsenal, Lehman. Yeah, midfield is a huge area for any team aspiring to any championship or anything. Odegaard and Party. Thomas Party played for Atletico and it took him a while to settle in the Premier League. He's playing very well now. He hit the post yesterday with an amazing shot. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. Odegaard got a very, very good goal. Um, mm. And Shaka, uh, if they, yeah. if he can keep his discipline, but there were signs yesterday uh, he was acting the maggot yeah. again. Yeah, I can't take him, Eamon. No. Can't take him. I mean, he committed something yesterday. He went down and pretended yeah. to get it for and he's up fighting. And I think I think at one time I saw him shouting at uh, uh, the Spurs manager. You know, I, I, I can't, I can't. He, he he does some good things for them, all right. But overall, I I I wouldn't trust him when they come into the the, the end near the end of the season and the big matches. I mean, I think he loses the head too easily. Yes, that's right. But no doubt that Arteta has done a really good job there. Yeah. At the same time, I think we both and everyone in the game respects. Antonio Conte, he must be dying though. They won't give him any any money to buy serious players. 
they're aiming for the Champions League spot. They're, they're, but they're, they're fifth at the moment. But they really don't have the quality. I, and uh, apart from Harry Kane, Son is having a, a poor season, having trouble scoring goals, which, you know, the, the goals that he gets. And uh, we'll see. I want to just... Yeah, but, but, uh, sorry, I'm just regarding... Mm. Sorry, but actually, like, Spurs were impressive yesterday, the way they responded in the second half. You know, that was typical Conte. He was being outclassed, but they came back and they came back in the second half. They didn't pa- pack it in. They kept going and, and going. Yes, but that's I, right. I yeah. agree entirely with you. I mean, he's got to get back. You've got to back him. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're like, look at the money Chelsea are spending for it, for yeah. example. And wasting, largely. And, and not doing, not doing no. anything. No. You know, like they're all spending money up and around there. I mean, but he's not getting any money. I mean, what he's doing with the players he has is fantastic. You know, that just happened yesterday. Arsenal are, are doing well as well. But they've got better players than, than Spurs. But Spurs made a match of it. They didn't pack it in. They came back in the second half as best they could. Uh, but Arsenal were just too good for them on the day. Yeah, and interesting. Next Sunday, John, Manchester United play Arsenal. I think it's at the Emirates. And that will be a big game for both mm. clubs. I want to move on now, John, to... The, the City United game, we spoke a bit about it. We were watching the game and yeah. talk, talking to each other during the game. I thought United were very well set up. He put Fred in, an extra man in midfield, to man mark De Bruyne, which is quite unusual these days to man yeah. mark someone. I thought that worked. I thought De Bruyne got frustrated. He did make a goal. He made the goal for Grealish uh, eventually late in the second half. But I was impressed with United, John, I have to say. And I come to City because you've been saying for weeks now that City weren't really doing it. But I thought United were good for their win. Yeah, yeah, they deserved to win, Eamon. It was a good performance uh, by them. Uh, he said he, he, he put De Bruyne out of the game with, with, with what he did with Fred. Uh, which one, but, but, but where De Bruyne plays, Eamon, he's, he, you know where he's going to be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. I'm not saying I'm not getting any taking anything away from Fred because he did a good job on him. But but Dubain is not a midfield player as such. He plays no, on not. the right hand side in a yes. midfield position, Eamon. Yep. Not right winger, but not not quite that, but definitely on that side. Yes. So you know where he's going to be in every match. Yep. Right. Well Fred did a good job on him, you know, apart from the, the, the cross that De Bruyne made. Uh but uh I thought United were the better were the better team definitely over the ninety minutes. Right now, I think we can say hello to Liam Brady, who's going to join us. Liam, how are you doing? I'm good, Eamon. Yeah, good. Well, let's go back to Arsenal, Liam. We just spoke to John about them and how well they started the match. They've had no joy at White Hart Lane for a long time. 2013, 2014 season, I think it was the last time they got a result there. But they they really started from the get-go yesterday. And in the first half, they were like the home team, as John said, and it, it was a very impressive performance. It was, I mean, and they've been doing that most of this season, really starting the games very, very well. Um, and uh, when they do score, I think something John mentioned uh, going back a month or two is that they go for the second. And yes. that's exactly what they did, you know. Yep. And, uh, you know, getting two goals ahead, uh, they almost put the game out of reach, of course, if they defend well, and which they did in the second half. Um, and Ramsdale, the goalkeeper, made a couple of really good saves when he had to. But Arsenal were really, really impressive. Every every player played a real good game. I thought they ran the midfield. Uh, Party was very good. Very unlucky not to score when yeah, he hit the great. post. Yeah. But a great shot. Uh, Odegaard, another great performance. Good goal. Uh, obviously got the break for the first goal. Loris's mistake. Uh, yeah. Which, which helped, you know, if you can get ahead, it helps a lot. Um, but no, Arsenal fully deserved to win. And it was, uh, it was a, a, a special victory, I would have to say. I mean, it really was impressive. Yeah. And just want to put this to you, Liam. Uh, they're eight points clear now. They've city twice. They've got to play city twice. And next Sunday, I think at the Emirates, they play Manchester United. They'll be big tests. Now you and John, have both played in championship winning sides. You, you're at Juventus, John at Leeds, and top, top t- clubs. And it, 
I want to ask you this question, uh, Liam, about a young side like that, new side, really. This is the point, isn't it? From here on in, and perhaps even from a little bit later on in, in the last 10 games, where the, the, you really do feel the pressure. And that will be the test. Those two games against City, even next Sunday against Man U, who are coming on song now, that's going to be a real test, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And you're right to say they, they are a young team. But up to now, they sh- haven't shown any nerves. You know, it was a big game yesterday. Yes, yeah. They didn't show any sign of nerves. And when they got a goal ahead, as I said, they went looking for the second and the third. Um, so uh, it, it is great to have that experience under your belt. And Arteta is a manager that hasn't been there either. So yeah. it, it is it is a worry. I'm sure all Arsenal fans are kind of thinking, well, are they going to be able to handle the pressure when... You know, the rundown comes maybe March, April. Yeah. Uh, and I was lucky at Juventus and John played in a very experienced Leeds team when they, they won the league. This Arsenal team doesn't have that experience. Yes. But when I was at Juventus, the older hands had been there before and knew, knew how to handle it. Yeah. Now Arsenal don't have that, but sometime you've got to make that breakthrough, Eamon. So I'm hoping that's, they can handle the pressure. Right. Now, we're going to just move on. Before you join us, I just started talking to John Liam about the Manchester United City game. And what did you think of United's performance? I, be, I thought it, they were very good. I thought the idea of bringing in Fred to man Mark De Bruyne worked. And I felt sorry for Haaland. I think he only touched the ball nine times in the game. And he looked very frustrated. He hasn't scored now for three matches, but he scored enough. He scored 21 in the season in the Premier League. What did you think of United's performance first and then City? Well, I think that, I think the papers are gone a bit overboard about Manchester United. I, I, I yep. have to say, I mean, you know, I read all the reports and I saw the match. Like a City were dominating in that second half and they got a goal that they thoroughly deserved when De Bruyne did well to set really, up. Uh, yeah. Um, Grealish with a good header, you know, and it looked uh, to me that, you know, they were going to go on and win the game, but it all changed dramatically with, yes. the, with the goal that was given that Fernandez scored. And in my opinion, it shouldn't have been given. And that changed the game in United's favor. Uh, they lifted their spirits, uh, and they went and got a second one very quickly. But I thought, I, I thought the press have gone overboard yes. about how United played and, and how well they shut down City. Um, it all changed in that instant for me, I mean. Yeah, John, we were talking during the game, me and you. I, I think we shared this, the view that if a player is offside, he must be interfering with play. It was clear that Rashford was three yards offside. He was interfering with play. He was interfering with the goalkeeper's position then. Mm-hmm. And also, Akanchi, who's the City centre half at the weekend, he was distracted by Rashford's run because he looked like he was in. And then, of course, Rashford didn't touch the ball, let it run to Fernandez, who finished it off. But it, he was clearly interfering, Rashford, and offside. Isn't that, didn't, that's your view as well, isn't it? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's no doubt about that, I mean, you yeah. know, and you'd have to, we'd have to go back and see who, who makes up these rules. Because the rule is now, that in Rashford's case, although he's he's in an offside position, if he doesn't touch the ball, Eamon, yeah. he's not offside. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Like it's it's just madness, you know. They're, they're, and I read in the paper this morning, and I hope I'm right, that the linesman on the on the on, on the on the far side put his flag up. Yeah, and then when it went to VAR, they ignored that. So you yeah. don't know where you are with the blue. Who made up this rule? No. Who, like. He's obviously offside. In, in, in our day, the three of us, if a player's offside when the pass is made, he's offside. Now they're saying, like, if, if, he's, if, if he doesn't touch the ball, and don't forget, there's no doubt that, that Radford, Rashford was chasing after the ball to get it. Yeah. You know, it's just that Fernandez came in. But of course, he's, he's disrupting the, 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 the opposition. It's just madness. I don't know where they're getting him. I don't know who's making the rules. I don't know who's doing it. Uh, I think FIFA are the ones that are responsible for the rules everywhere. But to make to bring an offside 
situation, which used to be fairly simple. That when the ball was played in an offside position, it's a free kick out. Yeah. Now, he can be in that position. He's not offside. Uh, and if he, not, sorry, he's not offside if he doesn't touch the ball. Right. Now you, the same, before I go to Liam on, on this, yeah. John, I've, I, I said a couple of months ago on our podcast that I'd had it with her. I thought it should be scrapped. You said to me... Uh, name, name, and I'll have to interrupt you there. This is not far. Well, hold on now. The decision mm. is made in the box upstairs. They're the ones who tell the referee... Well, they tell the referee... He didn't go to the pitch touchline to look at it. He gave it. He was told there was no interference. He was told to give the goal. And he gave it. But I want to talk to you about VAR. I want to talk to Liam about VAR. VAR is now making it a, com a committee, uh, almost, to decide these things. We have to get away from it because it's driving people mad. It's not just that particular decision on, on Saturday, which is a huge decision. It cost City the game, and it leaves us in a situation where we don't know what offside is. Liam, when we were growing up, the golden test was, is the player interfering with play? I thought Rashford was interfering with play. You thought he was interfering with play. Did you think that was the rule? Well, it is the rule. Yeah, yeah. If, no, if, they're saying say it I, isn't. Let's say, let's say I'm in, uh, there's a corner kick and the ball comes out to the edge of the box and someone smashes it. And there's a forward in an offside position standing in front of the goalkeeper and he lets it go through his legs. Yeah. And it goes in the net. Well, they're going to give him offside. But what did they say? What did they say? What was decided on the game against uh, City, uh, uh, United City? Is that Rashford wasn't interfering when, of course, he was. Yes. Now it's not VAR that does that, aim, and that's, that's right. Some bloke, that's some bloke, yes. some referee uh, up in the box that, deciding. Yeah. No, we're going to give the goal because he hasn't touched it. It was a completely wrong decision, absolutely yes. wrong decision. Huh. But that didn't have anything to do with VAR. Well, it did like, because time again we've done this podcast, Damon. And we've said it's not it's not the, the video film that they're no, watching. No. It's, it's the, them themselves who are making yes. the call. Yeah. It, it's the people. Yeah. I, and John, so you're... Yeah, I mean, if it, again, it's not without it, it, it. It's obvious to us that he should be offside. He should give offside as soon yes. as the, But the rule now is that he's not, off, he's not offside on, until he touches the ball. That's that's not far. That that's 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 the, the the rule that they've made. Right. You know, it, it's just crazy. I mean, any time anybody anybody body that's on the pitch is interfering with play. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's it's it's. I don't know who's made up this rule, Eamon, but it, it's just it's just so stupid that you know that, that all you have to do is it's the linesman apparently I read this morning had his flag up. Yeah. That he was offside. They ignored that. Okay. So we don't know who's making the flipping rules in, in, in what they were doing. But but I know I do understand VAR is, is it can be a nuisance order, but this this is nothing to do with VAR. This was a rule they made. Yeah. Amen. It's a rule they made, and, and it, because the fellow went obviously the valid and VAR didn't do the business, didn't do do what was right. But the fact is, this was this is a rule they've made up that a fellow can stand offside like stand. He was well offside, as we know. And then he's chasing the ball, you know. And it was lucky enough. But now, no, he, he was clever. Rashford but... was, was clever, John. He, 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 he didn't touch the ball. He, 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 he kind of shepherded the, the, the defender away from the ball. He took the defender's yeah. eye off Fernandez because the yeah. defender thought... Yeah, he, Damon, did he do that because he knew the rules or did he do it because it was... Was to help Fernand, uh, Fernandez I think get he the ball. did. I think he did it because he knew if he touched it, he'd be called offside. No. Oh. Of course, that's why. Sure, he would have been in on goal himself. Easier. It would have been an easier chance. He he didn't touch the ball because he knew if he touched it, he knew he'd been offside. Liam, I just want I, John. You said to me on Saturday, unless I had too much to drink, that you are oh. you've you've had it with VAR. 
<laughs> what are you laughing at? Liam? No, 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 no. I, you you I, haven't I, had I, it with VAR. You you still no, stick no, by I VAR. Haven't had VAR. This, okay. this, this wasn't a VAR decision. Oh right, Damon. it was a VAR decision, John. It was made by Oliver, who's the third referee up in the box. He told the referee, "Good goal." The referee never ne- went near any monitor. It's only because the rules are in that way. You know, the, John, it's the John, rule of John. the thing that... that but the, it's you not, can't... It's not far that made up, it wasn't far that made up the rule. It was Damon. far, he, he John. He touch the ball. Jesus. John, Oliver was the official in charge of VAR, right? And he told the referee that the goal was good. That has something to do with VAR. Liam, can I ask you to, for your view, has this got something to do with VAR? Yeah, of course. He did the video, the video assistant, uh, yeah. isn't it? Is that's what it's called, the video yes. assistant or something like that. So yeah. I don't know what his title it was, is. It, it was it? I didn't know who it was. It, it was, was Oliver, Oliver like young, young yeah. fellow. He thinks he's the yeah, best well, he, referee in the world. He's at fault, not the film, not the video of the film. No, it's him. He's, it's him, he's at fault, yeah. As they are time and time again for interpreting the rules wrong. It, 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 it impacted on the city defence. They couldn't go exactly. towards that ball because Rashford was in front of them. Exactly. So he had to be interfering with play. Exactly. So it was unfair. Now I want to go back to you, Liam, uh, and to John, about City. John has been saying for weeks, and uh, as with 99% of the things he says, I think he's been right, that City have not been themselves, they're not playing as well, as fluently as in other seasons. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I've said it as well. I've agreed yeah, with yeah. John over the last few years. Yeah. I, I, I think I've said myself, Eamon, I think there's a complacency about Manchester City in some games. You know, some yes. games they think they think it's just going to be a stroll in the park. You know, they yeah. lost at home to Brentford 2-0 or 2-1, I think it was. You know, that shouldn't happen, should it? You know, no. the gulf in class between those teams. And I've always thought City have had some complacency about them. Uh, and, you know, when Arsenal got that few points lead, I thought, well, that's that's going to be healthy because I think City are more likely to slip up than Arsenal, to be quite honest, because there is that complacency in them. And Guardiola is always trying to chop and change things and, you know, different teams and things like that. And I don't... I don't really get it, you know. No. Uh, so, so I, I, he, and he said, I think he said after the match, well, you know, that's us out of the league now type of thing. You know, yeah. I don't know what he's playing at. They're not out of the league at all. If they beat Arsenal twice, they're very much back in it, you now, know. I want to put something to you and to put it to John. John, Didi Hamam said before Manchester City signed Erling Haaland that it would be a bad move for the club that he might get 40 goals in a season, but the way City play would have to change. And he came out again on Thursday or Friday and said it again. I think, watching Haaland, he got nine touches on Saturday. I'll put it to you first, Liam, that I think Haaland is a great old-fashioned centre-forward. I think he'll score, he'll break all the goal-scoring records. But the way City play... For an old-fashioned centre forward, the ball doesn't get to him quickly enough. They're not direct enough. They play too many short passes, and for a striker, that kills you. What do you think of that? I'm not so sure, Eamon. Uh, okay, they they didn't create maybe as uh, as as many clear-cut chances as they normally do. But I thought Manchester United defended very well. Yes, and they stopped the supply getting to Haaland. They were very very tight on them. Yes, you know, but. You have to give teams credit of learning how to play against them, Eamon, as yeah, well. Yeah. You know, when he came when he came for us, nobody knew what they were up against. Now they've studied him and watched him. And he's he's not got a great touch. Uh, uh you know, he's not he's not gonna dribble his way out of things. Uh you know, he, he's a he's a kind of centre forward that if you play it up to him, he lays it off and then he makes a run to get in a in a goal scoring position. And maybe, maybe, uh, Diddy has a point. Maybe Manchester, Manchester City are not direct enough for him. But, you know, if he score, if he's going to score 40 goals, as Diddy said he might do, uh, well, that'll probably be good enough to win the league, I mean, you know. If, you know. Okay. okay, John, what do you make of that? We talked briefly about it before. I, I yeah. agree. I, 
it never occurred to me. I thought they'd be invincible with Haaland, but I can see it now. And even looking at Sunday, at Saturday's match against United, I could see him making runs in behind people, but no ball was coming. It was going square. It was an extra pass. Yeah, well, it, 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 I mean, it's a long, hard season, and I, I think it's it's very easy to like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. He, he was the best in the world. He no, to be fair to Didi, Didi said it before they signed him. Well, we, we, you'd have to wait until the season, season goes through. Right. I mean, I'm just asking you for your view uh, at the moment. No, I, can underst- I, can understand, I can understand what he's saying, and I respect Didi's, Didi's uh, uh, statement on it. You know, it could well be the case that, uh, despite the fact that he scored 40 goals, uh, he's, not, he's, he's, not, he's, not, he's, not, he's not really doing it for City. Because because of the way in which yes. they play, but they that, share that the could, goals that around. Could well, be the yeah. case, but but uh, it, it, it's it's. I'd rather wait and see, Eamon. I'd rather okay. see a lot yeah. more matches than than. We're only halfway through the season now. We scored a record number of goals. Uh, City are not playing well at the moment. I don't think they played well for a while, Eamon. I think what what happens with with uh, with uh, with Pep is that. I think he he looks at the game in a certain way that changes and changes and changes and changes uh, and looking for uh, something that's never happened before in football. Yes, yeah. That's the way I see him. And in other words, it's too complicated, Eamon. That's the way I see. That's the way I see City at the moment. Yeah, Liam. I've I've always had this thing about Pep. He, he's gone to big clubs, Bayern Munich. Uh, Barcelona, of course, with uh, Messi and Iniesta, Xavi, and all of that. I've always felt he's a bit too clever by half. He made he, he fielded the team Champions League final against Chelsea, and he made changes in midfield that were daft. I think he just tries to be too clever by half, but yet he he's got stacks of leagues won everywhere: Germany, Spain, England. Now, and I have that reservation about him. Do you recognise that at all? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think, uh, as John said, he's 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 trying things. He's making it uh, a lot more complicated the game than it needs to be. You know, for for example, he he seems to be bringing his full backs into midfield. You know, yes. that's been on for yeah. quite a few months. Um, okay, he, he he's he's won the league last year and he's won all umpteen leagues across the world, but he's. He's had the he's had the financial clout more than anybody, Eamon. Yes, in, of course he has. Yeah, maybe 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 in Spain he had Real Madrid matching him, but since he's been uh, gone from Barcelona, uh, he's uh, Bayern Munich were yeah. you know odds on certainties to win yeah. to win the league year in year out, and and Manchester City probably the same. You know, I think uh, uh, he's had that going in his favour. Uh, now, is he would he would he be a wonderful, wonderful manager at somewhere like Aston Villa? Or I doubt it very much, you know. So uh, f- football football is not as complicated as Guardiola is making it out to be. Eh? I agree with that. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. Then. And now, John, let me ask you about Liverpool. After the Brighton, they got hammered by Brighton. I watched the match actually, and as a young Irish lad playing. Evan Ferguson for Brighton, who looks like he might be special. He's only 18, but he's he's in the first team and he deserves to be in it. Klopp said afterwards at the press conference, he, he said, I take full responsibility for this. It's the worst I've ever seen a team of mine play. That includes uh. um, at Mainz uh, and at Dortmund. He said, I tried a formation, it didn't work, and I'm sorry. It was quite abject and quite brave and humble, really. Uh, how badly off are they, John? Well, very bad, I mean, by yeah. Liverpool standards, as we know, by results. You know, yeah. you can see the results, you see the way they're playing. Yeah. So I know they've had a few injuries, but even before that, they haven't played well. There's something amiss, Simon. And we, I don't know what it is, but right. I, we did speak last week. They had a lot of injuries now, to be fair, uh, and Nunes was injured uh, for the Brighton match, for example, but they had, you know, Jota um, injured, and they, they've they've lost a lot of players through injury. But even so, in midfield, for example, they're wrong. It's wrong. Well, it's it, it's on the pitch, Eamon. I mean, the, 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 
they're not playing the top teams at the moment. That's that's uh, really beating them well. Yes. Um, so the players they have should be better than the players they're playing against even now. They shouldn't be getting beaten three, and and the manager shouldn't be saying, "Well, it's the worst play I've ever seen." But I, and it's it's not just now, I mean, it's from since the start of the season. Yes. It hasn't been right since the start of the season. And the, 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 and we did say last week the good thing about football: if there's something wrong, it manifests itself on the pitch. Yeah, that's that's the that, that's the great thing about football. We don't know. I I I, I keep going back to the Salah situation. Yes, uh, with the, with the increase in it, does it does it destroy the team morale? Does it start to destroy the team spirit? It can happen. Money corrupts. Uh, but there's something not right anyway. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Uh, that's my that'd be my take on it. Uh, but Liverpool are not the Liverpool that we've had for the last few years, and, and they have had injuries. But even with, when they had the players fit, a lot of the players fit they, from the start of the season, they haven't been the Liverpool team that we've be, been used to. Yeah, Liam, uh, I'd like your take on Liverpool. They, I mean, again, I preface it by saying I think they're just too easy to play against them. Teams are playing through them, and if it weren't for Allison who himself made a mistake last week, they'd be a lot worse off in the goals against department. Well, I was, uh, I, I was in, a, uh, in a place and I could watch the game live as well. And honestly, it, it was a really, really poor Liverpool performance. The worst, the worst I've seen on the club, really. Brighton could have won five or six. Yes. Uh, uh, second to the ball all the time. Midfield, nothing. Uh, Brighton just dominated totally midfield. And created chance after chance. And uh, you mentioned the goalkeeper. He had another good game, you know. So, uh, it really was bad. And I know they have injuries, but I would agree with John. The players they're putting out on the park should be good enough to, to, to do better than that. So there, there is, there is something wrong between, uh, uh, the player, the manager, and maybe, maybe the, 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 the people who are running the club. I don't know. Um, well, they've said they're willing to they, sell. They, is there is there rumours that they're trying to sell? Yeah, they've said that they're willing to sell. Fenway Sports yeah. Group, who are the owners, the Americans, they've said uh, or hinted that they're willing to sell. Did you notice... Well, that, that, that doesn't help club in no. general. No. It doesn't help the manager. Uh, it doesn't help the, the playing staff, the coaching staff. Nobody really knows where they are if that's the case and it's uh, uh, John might have a point as well you know Salah getting all the money he did um, maybe has created a little bit of animosity in the dressing room I don't know I, I shouldn't think so I should, uh, the Liverpool players should be happy to have somebody like Salah in the team but I don't know it, it hasn't worked this season at all and uh, I've watched them now a few times I thought they turned the corner. Didn't they beat Manchester City earlier in the season um, yeah, at Anfield? Yeah. And, yeah. and they played, they were look, looked like they were back to their best when Salah scored that goal straight from uh, uh, Alisson's kick. Yes. Kick long kick. You remember? Cancelo. Yeah. And I thought, oh, they really were up for that game. But since that game, they've, they've gone back to square one. It's, uh, it's really worrying for, for Liverpool. Yeah. Amy, I mean, can I just say yeah. something there? You know, when they beat, beat, they won that, that game, and Liam says is right, the next match they played, I think, was at Knott's Forest and they got beat. Yes. So they never got a run going. I think it was, no. I knew they had, they knew they had to pick it up for the Manchester City match, you know? Yes. But anyway, with it, it's very, it's, it's a, but, but I, I, I did, I forgot to mention that Liam's mentioned that they, they're selling the club, I mean. Yes. Like, that doesn't do anybody any good. I mean, first of all, Klopp has to think, what, what's my situation going to be? The players will think, what's, what's our situation to be? Yes. Something like that. It's, it's very, very hard to build the team spirit that Liverpool had. Yes. It's very hard to do it, and it's very, very easy to destroy it. Yes. Um, okay. John and Liam, I'm grateful to both of you. John, just before you go, I know a lot of people, Leeds fans, listen to the podcast to see mm. what you have to say. Now, we watched the Villa Leeds match. Villa were awful and Leeds were very unlucky. Are you hopeful yeah. that they'll stay up? They're only about, they're only two points away from the bottom three. Yeah. What yeah, do you think? There's loads down there, Eamon. Isn't there it? is, you know yeah. I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a it's full it's house. Leicester Wolves, yeah. Leicester <laughs> Wolves, Bournemouth, West Ham, Everton, Southampton yeah. and Leeds. Yeah. 
So they're, they're above them, and, but it's not, it's, the, it's not the way to... Actually, I think that's the best I've seen Leeds play. I'd be more hopeful after seeing that match, I mean, despite the, the, the fact that they lost. I thought they were unlucky in the game, and they showed a spirit that I, didn't, that I haven't seen from some of the other clubs beneath them. Right. You know, so yeah. as far as the Leeds fans are concerned, I'm more, I'm more optimistic now after the weekend matches than I was before. And Liam, just for Arsenal fans, this is high altitude now, isn't it? <laughs> They'll need oxygen soon. It's a fantastic achievement by Arteta on on the face of it, Liam. Are you optimistic that they can hang on, or do you think? It's yeah, been- I am, Eamon. I am, Eamon. I'm, I'm very encouraged by the way they're playing. You know, and uh, I think I said at the start of the podcast today. They're not showing any sign of nerves. No, no. You know? Yeah. And and they look as if they're you know, they're all together, really, really together. So uh yeah, I am optimistic. At the start of the season, top four, I would have grabbed snatched your hand off. But uh now, you know, the position they're in, I'm actually thinking they can do it. And the man U game, obviously next Sunday, is a biggie. Yeah, well if they play like they did against Spurs, I think they'll beat Man U. Okay, uh, John and Liam, it's a fantastic pleasure for all of us to have you on the podcast. John Giles and Liam Brady, two great players, two great judges of the game.